Dads. My name is Tracy Panace, and I help moms and dads just like you and I sell things that their kids no longer need or want at one of our upcoming kids consignment sales. So the purpose of today's video is just to give you an overview of how you can join us at a seller at one of our upcoming events. Hey you guys, we are super excited that you've made the decision to sell at one of our upcoming Just Between Friends sales. The first thing you need to do to consign with us is to get a consigner number. And this is a very simple process that starts on our website. You'll go to one of our subsites. You can see I am on the reading.jbfsale.com site. So it's the site location name.jbfsale.com. And then you'll go over here to the login button and I am a known user so my user ID is always going to be my email address that I signed up with and then the password that you create as a new user you'll go down here to the coral button and you will complete some basic information and that will generate a consigner number for you so each time you subsequently log in the system will remember you and this top screen tells me the sales that I have currently signed up for and then the upcoming events are those events that I can choose to sign up for at this time. So we're going to use Reading as the example. We're going to sign up to consign by simply clicking on that top button telling the system if this is my first time selling or if I'm a returning seller. Save that. You do need to agree to the terms and conditions down here. You can print those out by clicking on one of the buttons and then confirm your sign up. And that's it. After you've registered for the sales, now's a good time to start gathering up your supplies. So you're going to need a lot of hangers depending upon how much clothing you have. And the good news is we take both wire and plastic hangers, whichever you have the most of. The only thing that's important is the size of the hanger. So if you have a lot of clothing that is between infant and up to size 5T, children size, so the smaller wire hangers are fine, again, or plastic is okay. And then for size six and up, it's an adult size hanger that works best for those items. We will also accept things like pant hangers for when you're hanging pants or skirts that you get at the department store. So we're, whenever you're in a store or your dry cleaner, just ask if they have any extra hangers. That's a good place to start gathering up your hangers. And also when you shop at the sale, make sure you save the hangers because we do sell the items with the hanger. We do not detach the hanger from the items that are sold. So that's your first thing is you need lots of hangers and then you're going to need um, safety pins. So the safety pins can be used to hang pants onto the hanger up on the top bar. You'll also use the safety pin to attach the tag to the item or you can also use a tagging gun and I'll get to the tagging gun in just a moment. But two inch safety pins are best. You can find those on Amazon or Joanne uh, fabric store, Walmart, or the dollar store. Just make sure that they are the bigger size safety pins. The really teeny tiny small ones just do not hold up during the stress of the sale. Once you've got your safety pins, other things that are going to be handy for you are string or ribbon to tie your shoes together. Um, also, packing tape and painter's tape. Painter's tape is great for books, puzzles, and games. And then the packing tape is good for your big items. And also, anything that goes in a Ziploc bag, like if you've got a whole bunch of Matchbox toys or Barbies, um, even onesies can go in a Ziploc bag. We always recommend that after you put anything in a Ziploc bag, the bag is taped shut so that the items stay intact during the sale. So you definitely need a lot of packing tape. You will need scissors to cut your tags. Um, zip ties are always a good thing to have on hand because you can be securing two hangers together if you have a set or for shoes, zip ties are excellent to keep the right and the left shoe together. They're virtually indestructible. And so these you can pick up at Walmart or Harbor Freight and they're, they're really inexpensive. Um, hang, rubber bands are something else to have on hand, again, just, if you have it there, then you don't need to go search for it while you're in the middle of your prep. The other thing that is necessary to tag is white cardstock. So 65 pound and up white cardstock is what we recommend. You don't want it to be so heavy that it'll jam your printer. Likewise, normal 24 bond paper is not accepted at the sale because it just simply, it doesn't stay 
on the item with all of the clothing that's packed on the rack. So 65 pound and up white cardstock. And then a couple optional items that will make your life easier but are not required. Number one is a tagging gun. So if you do have a lot of clothing items, we highly recommend a tagging gun. And we will share with you in other videos the proper way to use a tagging gun because these things can cause damage to clothing if not used properly. But you can buy these either from us on our website or at one of our supply sales or on Amazon. Um, any place that sells a tagging gun is fine and the plastic attachers that come with it are also required. And then the last thing, if you have one, a paper cutter can save you time as well. So your tags are gonna print nine to a page and then you'll need to uh, cut those up, again, either with scissors or with the paper cutter so that you can affix them to each item. After you've gathered up all your supplies, it's now time to clean house. At the Just Between Friends sale, we are looking for items that are clean, current, complete, and compliant. What does that look like, you may be asking yourself. With respect to clothing, items that are current fall within our seasonal guidelines. For our spring-summer sale, we're looking for clothing that your child would typically wear between the months of April and September. And for the fall-winter events, we're thinking cooler, colder weather that your kiddo is going to wear between October and March. Some examples of that include lightweight material. So this is a little uh, short sleeve outfit for a little girl. This would be perfect for our spring summer event. There are some guidelines regarding long sleeves, which you can consult on our website. But here's an example of something where long sleeves are appropriate for the spring summer sale. This is a little jacket. It's got a zipper, so it can be worn as a layering piece. And then it includes some short sleeve onesies and things like that. So this, again, the theme of this being whales is something that you would expect your kiddo to wear during the summer months. There are some items that we take at both sales, regardless of seasonality. That includes denim. And so jeans are acceptable for both the spring summer sale as well as the fall winter sale. Some items that are specific for the fall winter sale include heavier weights of fabric. So this is a fleece pajama set. That is something that your kiddo is probably gonna wear between October and March. So that's perfect for the fall sales. Same things with long sleeve uh, dresses or pajamas or things of that nature. The seasonal guidelines also apply to shoes. So shoes for this, the fall winter sale would include things like snow boots or these UGG like boots, things that are, are warmer or have fleece in them. For the spring summer event, we're talking about flip flops or sandals. Uh, those are perfect for the spring summer sale. Again, there are some things that we take regardless of season. That would be like dress shoes or sneakers, things that your kiddos wear all year round are going to fall into that category. Consult the complete list on our website for additional details. As far as sizing goes for clothing, we take from zero all the way up to size 18 for big boys and juniors for girls. And then we take maternity for expectant moms. We only have two limits at the JBF sale and that is for junior and maternity and each seller is permitted to bring 10 of each type of those items. So 10 hangers for maternity, 10 hangers for junior, and then for everything else, for all of the other children's clothing, you can bring as much as you would like. Some other things that we accept at the sale include accessories. So if you've got hats or in the winter sale, we accept mittens, scarves, um, those types of accessories that go with your winter coats, bring those on. And then toys, books, games, puzzles, DVDs. Here's some examples uh, of small electronics, DVDs, games, puzzles, and then books are also good sellers at the sale. Any sort of loose items like Barbies or arts and crafts, and of course, all of your big stuff. So any strollers, pack and plays, extra saucers, swings, they sell like hotcakes at the sale, as do bigger toys like this guy. We talked about current with respect to seasonality. Let's talk about compliance. At Just Between Friends, safety is our number one priority. And so it's important that the items that you bring to the sale are not recalled. Be sure to double check your strollers, car seats, any large items that they do not appear on the consumer safety products recall list. The third C relates to complete. So any item that is sold at the sale needs to be in good working order. That includes small electronics. So if it requires a battery, 
it has to have a working battery so that our customers can test it before they leave the sale. So make sure you check your batteries. You also want to make sure that if you have things in a case like DVDs or CDs and there's additional components. So this is a set of three CDs, but when I open it up, there's only one. And so the buyer who purchased that is obviously gonna be disappointed because there's only one CD and it's advertised as three. So double check that, as well as puzzles, making sure that all of the pieces are there. And then for things like games, all of the small components. So if there are dice required or little uh, pieces for the game to be played, they all need to be included in the packaging. At Just Between Friends, we take a lot of pride in the quality of the items that we sell. This is not a yard sale, it's a huge kids consignment sale, and we want our kids to have the best. So that is where clean comes into play. For your clothing items, they must be free of rips, stains, tears. And so something like this would not be accepted because it is clearly stained. So this is something that if it is brought to the sale, it will be removed from the racks and either return to you at consignor pickup, or if it is marked donate, it will automatically be donated. Same thing for this item. You wanna pay particular attention with infant items to the neck area, because that's where there tends to be a lot of formula stains, and the light in our venue really brings that to life. For your shoes, we are super picky about shoes at the Just Between Friends sale. So this is an extreme example of something that we would not accept, but please be sure to check the, the toes, the soles, and the inside of the shoes to make sure that these are in excellent condition. We understand gently used, but excessive wear and tear is something that we are unable to accept. Don't forget about your toys. So this poor Barbie has been a little bit overloved by somebody. And so markers on Barbies or headless Barbies are something that we are unable to accept at the event. Double check your books to make sure that they are not colored in or pages are not missing, um, things like that. We will pull from the, the sales floor, as well as arts and crafts that are excessively used or worn. This next part of the process is probably gonna take you the most time. So it's important that you do it properly so that your time is well spent. And that is hanging your items. So we already talked about the fact that we accept both wire and plastic hangers, but there is a right and a wrong way to hang items. So this particular set, there's multiple pieces. It's all on there nice and secure. The hanger is the appropriate size for the item, so this is good to go. You can sell more than one item as a set, and so this is rubber banded together. You can also do that with a zip tie. You're only gonna create one tag for this two-piece set, and you would include that information in your description. Pants, shorts, or swimsuits can be attached to a hanger as well using two inch safety pins. And you always wanna secure that to the top bar. If you secure the safety pin to the bottom bar, your item is gonna get cattywampus. It will look really bad on the rack. So make sure that you use a large safety pin to the top of the bar. So these are the proper placement of items on a hanger. If it is not done correctly, this is how you know. So the opening of the hanger should form a question mark to the left. This is forming the opening to the right, and so you would need to turn that around so that the hanger is going in the right direction. With respect to size, here is a size small junior's top on a kid size hanger. So anything size six and up needs to go on an adult size hanger. Anything five below goes on a kid size. And something like this, which is strappy, this could apply to dresses or swimsuits or nightgowns, should also be safety pinned to the hanger so it does not fall off. When you do a shake test, you want it to stay on that hanger. There are some clothing items that can be placed into a Ziploc bag. Those include socks, swaddlers, sleep sacks, and onesies. You can put up to five onesies that are the same size and gender into a Ziploc bag like this. We always recommend anything in a Ziploc bag gets taped shut. Be sure that you inspect these items before they're placed in the bag. We don't want any disappointed customers who have a really nice onesie on the top and then not so nice onesies on the bottom. So take extra care in making sure that those items are also clean and complete. Same thing with socks, you can bag those. Some things that we don't recommend bagging are shoes. Shoes should always be out of a box or bag so that a mom or dad can see if this is actually going to fit their child. And that's why we recommend zip ties or string 
for shoes versus being bagged. There are some shoes that you're unable to secure a string or zip tie to, and those would be real itty bitty infant shoes. If there is no way to, to tie them together, you can bag them, but that is only a last resort. You've gathered, you've prepped, and now it is time to price. And all of that starts on our website by logging into your JBF account up in the upper right hand corner. This is the field which should automatically populate with your email address that is tied to your JBF account. That is your login information and then your password. Click on the purple button. It'll take you to your dashboard and you can see I am signed up for two events. I'm signed up for the Lancaster sale as a shopper and then for Reading I'm signed up as a consigner. So for whichever sale you wish to participate in as a seller, you need to be signed up as a consigner by updating your profile each and every season. From that point, you're just going to go up here to where it says tagging and double click on that button. So if this was my very first time using the tagging system, the first thing you should go, do is go to my settings and this is where you can set your defaults. So you have the option to reduce your items, which means on the half price day of the sale, your items will be marked 50% off. And then the other option is to donate. So your unsold items either can be picked up or donated. And so you can change these defaults by clicking or unclicking the boxes. You can also do it on a case by case basis. So if you feel like the majority of your items will be reduced and donate, it's a good idea to have that programmed as your default. You can always change it on a line by line um, basis. And I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to update that. And now we're ready to start creating our tags. So when you go to create your tags, you have two options. You can either do basic entry, which means that I've got a whole bunch of random stuff. Maybe I've got some books, games, puzzles, a couple pieces of clothing. If that's what my desk is looking like when it's time to tag, I'm going to choose basic entry. If on the other hand, your items are organized and sorted by size and gender for your clothing, then you would want to check the rapid entry. So rapid entry, it's a faster way to tag and we'll show you how. So the first thing we want to do is select the season and then in the rapid entry mode, if I have all boys clothing, you can see that automatically those 10 fields have been populated for boys clothing. If the size is all zero to six months, again, it's all populated. The only things you have left to do are enter in the description and the price. And so for your description, we recommend you always start with the brand. So I'm gonna say Gap Navy Pants um, two-piece set, something that would give the cashier a description so that they know that the tag belongs to that item. Likewise, if that tag becomes detached from the pant set, then the folks that are working on the floor are more likely to be able to match that tag. So that's my item description. I'm going to go over here to price and your prices need to be set in 25 cent increments. That is new to the tagging system. It used to be 50 cent increments, but now let's say we want to do 525 for this gap blue pant set. Now remember my defaults are set to reduce and donate, but if I don't wish to reduce this item, I would uncheck that box. Same thing with donate. So you can modify the defaults at any point. And the other thing that you can modify is the quantity. So if I have two of these gap navy blue pants that are exactly the same, I can change that. Same thing with your default. So Although I did this for rapid entry, if I happen to have a girl's piece of clothing mixed in there, I can change that and you can see everything from that point down also changed to girl's clothing. So rapid entry can save you a lot of time by having your stuff organized. The last thing you're going to do before you leave this screen is save. So you're going to save it and then the next time you go back, you can see I've got the Gap navy blue pants two-piece set. I said I had two of them, so I have two entries for that item. Now you're ready to print. So the tags will print nine to a page, so we're gonna do nine for this example. You have the option up here of selecting all or selecting all on this page. So you can do that if that saves you some time. So let's select all on this page. Okay, 
So we've got them all selected. We're going to go up here to print tags. And again, you have a couple of options. You can either do PDF, which requires Adobe, so you need to have the most updated version of Adobe installed on your computer. It's a free download if you don't have it. Or you can do an HTML option, which just requires access to the internet. So we're going to select the PDF option. And then this screen will show you an example of what your tags are supposed to look like. It's going to print portrait, and they should occupy the entire width and length of the page. You don't want super tiny tags um, or anything that's kind of off center. It should be nicely centered on the page and consume the entire page. So I'll go to print and you can see what this looks like. So this shows me I've got nine to a page. That looks good. Some of my items are set to donate. That's what the D is on the left side of the tag. Um, others that do not have that D on there mean that they will not be donate. And likewise, this star means that this item is going to remain full price on half price day. This particular tag up here, there is no star, so this will go half off on half price day. When that all looks good to go, just simply select print and you are done with this step of the process. So your items are all entered, your tags are printed, and now it's time to affix it to the item. Let's start with clothing. For clothing, you have two options. You can either secure the tag with a safety pin, and when you're looking at the item, the tag is going to go on the right-hand side with the opening of the question mark to the left. So just like this, and you will see a little marking on the top of the tag to indicate where the safety pin should go. You also have the option of using a tagging gun, and we have lots of resources on YouTube as well as on our website as to how to properly use a tagging gun because there is a right way and there is a wrong way so be sure to consult those resources items that are bagged the tag should go to the outside of the bag and it should be taped with clear tap packing tape you don't want to use excessive amounts of tape because if you do that it interferes with the scanning but be sure to just place that tag on the outside of the bag and again tape the bag shut any items that have loose pieces like this dartboard so all of these little darts, we want to put those in a Ziploc bag and secure that in some way to the back of this item, taping the tag to the outside of the bag. For multiple pieces, we recommend an additional step. So these are the components to this large item. And so I've got this in a Ziploc bag. I have the item number, which is printed on the outside of the tag, and then I have two of two. And then this one would be one of one. And so that way the customer knows that there should be two items included in their purchase. Another tip when it comes to big items is we have a special system. It's called a yellow tag at the sale. And so a lot of people, if you're a first time seller, you'll hear this term yellow tag and wonder, where do I get the yellow tags? Well, we provide those for you at the sale. The only thing that we ask is that for your big items like this, so we define big items as anything that is too large to be physically carried through the checkout line. So it's super heavy, like a piece of furniture, or it's big and bulky like this game or this stroller. Those are all yellow tagged items. You want to loosely affix the tag to the item so that when you get to the sale, we can remove it, scan it. And then for things like a stroller, we also need to sanitize it. Um, and then we will put it back on your item. So you'll save yourself and our staff a lot of time if it's easy for us to remove the original price tag so that we can affix the yellow tag. Some other items that you need to affix your price tags to um, that can be a little bit tricky are accessories. So we generally pin accessories to the ends of the clothing rack so they can be seen. So your tag can be secured using the tagging gun or a safety pin. They do not need to be bagged unless it's something like socks or onesies, those types of items, uh, clothing items that we discussed can be bagged. For shoes, the best way to do shoes is to take your tag, put a hole, um, using a hole punch, use a zip tie or string, and then you're just gonna thread that through your shoes the right and left shoe together, and that way your shoes will stay together despite lots of different hands touching it during the sale. Zip ties are your best friend when it comes to shoes. 
Some other items that you may be thinking about include books, games, and puzzles. And the best thing to use for these items is painter's tape. Painter's tape does not leave any residue and does not damage these items in any way. It should go on the back of the item, on the back of the book, and not inside or on the front of the book. If you do have multiple books that you wish to sell together as a set, you can tie them together with string. Um, again, attach the tag with painter's tape or scotch tape, no packing tape on books because it will damage the books. Or you can also put those in a Ziploc bag and tape the bag shut. You're almost there, moms and dads. It's time to drop off your items. So on our website, in our Facebook group, and in various emails, you're getting lots of information about drop off. And so I'd encourage you to take some time to read through that. But just a couple of ninja tips so that you can get in and out very quickly is as you are prepping and pricing your items, you should rubber band similar size and gender together. So this is all of my infant boy items. I've got them rubber banded together. So then when I get to the sale, I can just remove that rubber band and place it on the rack to greatly improve the number of steps I have to take and the time that drop off is going to take me. Likewise, with your toys and other loose items, the sales floors are all organized by zone. It's zones one through seven. You can consult the maps on our websites and I have like all my zone two, which is characters. All of those items are in this box. So when I get to that zone two table, all I need to do is place it onto the table. Zone seven is puzzles, books, and games. All of those items are in here as well. So this will help you to get in and out of drop off very quickly. The last couple of steps. So during the sale itself, you have the ability to see your items being sold in real time. So to do that, you just log into the tagging site log into your account and you can see sales in real time. So it's better than winning the lottery to see all of that money, which is gonna come back into your home very shortly. The final part of the sale involves pickup. So you have the choice as to whether or not you wish to donate your unsold items to one of our local charity partners or pick up your unsold items. If you choose to donate some or all of your items, you will receive a tax donation receipt with your check. And so our charity partners, thank you for your generosity. It helps local families in our community through your charitable donations. If you decide to pick up some or all of your items, consult the website for the pickup time. Our pickup is a very organized and streamlined process, so you're not gonna need to go digging for your items or searching through the racks. No need to spend extra time at home um, marking your hangers with special tape or anything like that because we will have it all neatly sorted and organized for you. So you can just come in and out and get out of there in no time at all. The final step, of course, is getting paid. And so that's the best part of the JBF sale. Our average seller makes around $350 and you can too by following the steps that we shared with you in this video. We send all payments electronically and those are sent within five to 10 days of the conclusion of the sale. If you want to increase your earnings, I would encourage you to join the JBF team. Any team member who works for one four hour shift earns an extra 10% on their sold items. So you increase your earnings from 60 to 70% with just one shift and you get to shop earlier. So I can't wait to see all of you guys at the sale. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to call, email, or text me or join us in the conversation happening online.